as a child experiencing neglect by my bio mom was very hard for me. She would lie to me and say, oh, I'm gonna come and get you, and then I'll wait outside and she'd never show up. I live in five foster homes and one group home. Me not being in a stable home and moving from different schools to different schools, making new friends was kind of a very hard thing for me to do. Having friends is a very important part of your life and you being shipped around just like you're some package, it's just like very upsetting. Yeah. For a foster youth entering the dependency system, it can be a very scary and lonely place. They often don't understand what's happening. They often don't understand what the next steps in the process are. And they really, really want to know, when is this going to end? We're deciding whether or not a child's going to remain in a home. CASAs are invaluable. They're kind of our um, really lifeline to the child and how the child can bring their voice into the courtroom. We rely on them to provide justice and to do the best that we can for these children. Why would anyone do this unless they really cared? Unless they really wanted to make an impact? Unless they really wanted to make a difference in someone's life? Even if a kid is in your face and doesn't feel like appreciative, somehow you've made a difference and somehow you've made other people aware of the needs of that child that they may not have been able to express themselves or that nobody's been able to express for them. There are many adults in the youth's life and most of those adults are paid. They're an attorney, a social worker, maybe a therapist, even foster parents are paid. A CASA volunteer is not and that really goes a long way in building trust with the young person. I didn't trust anybody. Uh, I had nobody to trust and Shelly came and you know, she came every single week. Things were going along well, and then we were driving along one day and we were in the car, and he just really acted out. He was probably embarrassed about what he did because then when I came back the next week, he refused to see me. And that went on for several weeks, but I just kept showing up. And I think that he finally realized that unlike the other people who, when he acted out, were gonna leave, I wasn't gonna leave. I've always feared graduation day that I, I would have nobody, but I always know that she would be be the one to show up. And even, even if I had just her at my uh, graduation, that, that would be enough. What you're giving that child and what you're getting back in terms of when that child calls you because they need you, it's like, <sighs> they know I'm there. If you have at least one person who's constantly staying through your life, you have a, a very high chance of graduating and a chance of succeeding in life. To see a kid like Amari, who struggles with school, who had fights with teachers, the fact that he's thinking about college now is unbelievable. My goal is to get my PhD in child psych or probably become a social worker. So I'm trying to choose between which one I really want to do. And he said to me, you know, now that I've been adopted and I have my own family and I don't need a casa anymore, would you be my godmother? I remember her eyes just uh, lining up, and I like, heard her like very beautiful smile. It's very uh, sweet. Of course, I'll be his godmother. He just he adds a whole dimension to my life that I couldn't have had any other way. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. I'm very thankful to have her in my life. <laughs>